Now, I did a video for Susie Parker, who is also the sister of Dorian Lee Parker. They're sisters. And in the title for Susie Parker's video, we titled Susie Parker, the model who could not stop lying. But boy, let's just call them the lying sisters. <laughs> because Dorian Lee had the same problem. She could not stop lying and she lied about everything, literally. But we are going to talk about that because I kind of understand a little bit also. She was one of the models who broke a lot of barriers and very gorgeous and lived a very phenomenal life also, but very crazy, chaotic, scandalous, and just, oof. I think there was a lot of work done on her life, if you catch my drift. Work in the spiritual sense, because there was just someone who was really, really after her, really after her to destroy her. But it all had to do with a man taking somebody else's man. We are going to get into all of that and start with her childhood first. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Allude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. And if you're already subscribed, please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. So let's start with her childhood and I couldn't find any childhood photos. There's a lot of photos that are just missing. So use your imagination, okay? Her entrance into the world was on April 23rd, 1970. 17, and it was a typical one. Born to young parents in Texas, Dorian was soon followed by her siblings, Florian and Georgia Bell. However, it was their relocation to New Jersey that set the stage for a dramatic turn of events. George Parker, Dorian's father, found joy from his invention of a groundbreaking etching acid, a discovery he believed would secure the family's financial future. Yet Elizabeth Parker, Dorian's mother, had a revelation of her own, a late-in-life pregnancy that defied her belief that she was entering menopause. This unexpected addition to the family came in the form of Dorian's younger sister, who would later rise to fame as the iconic model Susie Parker. And I did a video for her, and I will also have her video pinned in the comments so you guys can check that out right after. Dorian's early years were shrouded in a haze of lies and contradiction. While her autobiography claimed an early marriage at the age of 17, records reveal a different narrative, placing her at the age of 20 when she married Marshall Powell Hawkins. Despite this cloud of uncertainty, Dorian went on a journey of self-discovery, embracing a diverse set of talents. Her time in Manhattan as a department store file clerk and radio show tabulator foreshadowed a seismic shift towards a career in mechanical engineering. Armed with determination and resilience, she pursued a degree at Stevens Institute of Technology and soon became a qualified mechanical engineer. However, Dorian's aspirations in the male-dominated engineering realm were tainted by sexism and disregard. Employed by Eastern Airlines as a wing designer during the onset of World War II, despite her undeniable skill and acumen, the company's refusal to take her seriously fueled her displeasure, leading her to quit and find another career path. Dorian Lee, her life took a dramatic turn when she stepped into the bustling world of Republic Pictures, a studio famed for its action-packed B-movies and cowboy adventures. But tasked with writing ad copy for their latest cinematic exploits, Dorian embraced her new role. However, it wasn't long before someone unearthed a truth that had somehow remained hidden. Dorian was stunning and gorgeous. I mean, look at her, right? She's very elegant, very gorgeous woman. She does not let the clothes wear her. She wears the clothes. Probably one of the most elegant women that we've done so far. This woman named Miss Weyburn, which was a keen-eyed employee at Republic Pictures, first spotted Dorian's potential beyond the typewriter. She urged Dorian to consider modeling, a suggestion that would pivot her life in a new direction. But the path to modeling was filled with obstacles for Dorian. At 27, with two children to her name and standing at a modest 5'5", she hardly fit the conventional mold of a model. She was too old, she was too short, and already had a family, which they don't like models to have families already at the peak of their careers because you're going to be traveling a lot. Conover, the modeling agency that took her in, was baffled by how to market her unique charm and sent her to Diana Vreeland, the legendary editor of Harper's Bazaar. Vreeland, who had catapulted Lauren Bacall, which I did a video for Lauren Bacall also, to stardom, saw something special in Dorian, as did fashion photographer Louis Dow Wolf. They were particularly enchanted by Dorian's eyebrows, a feature both women believed set her apart. So Vreeland, smitten with Dorian's distinctive look, decided she was perfect for the cover of Harper's Bazaar. This was no small feat. Starting one's model career on the cover of such a prestigious magazine was virtually unheard of, so she started really big. 
While securing the job, Dorian rushed to share the news with Conover, where she received a crucial piece of advice. Lie about her age at all costs. That was the advice that she got. So Dorian, who had yet to reveal her true age to Vreeland, boldly claimed she was only 19 years old and conventionally omitted any mention of her children. So she was 27, but she was taking care of herself so well. And it's a shame that I could not find any like beauty secrets or diet secrets for her. But she took care of herself so well that she lied to him, Sam 19, and they believed her. And she also denied having any kids. She already had two kids by then she denied being married or anything like that she just wanted to make it which comment below do you think that's justifiable in this instant like i'm not too mad at her for lying about that because who told modeling agencies to even be that weird anyways that after a certain age it's like you're old considered old so comment below your thoughts with that like are you in agreement with her with this part with this part i have nothing to say like girl do what you gotta do to get what you need to get because yeah you know okay you know this owning your children of course is gonna come with a cost as we will see so dorian's venture into modeling was met with disdain from her parents they did not like her modeling they viewed the profession with skepticism and demanded she change her last name they did not want her using their last name for this filth to them it was like hollywood and modeling was the devil's den and they wanted nothing to do with it reluctantly dorian adopted the moniker dorian lee leaving her birth name behind at least until her success proved too lucrative for her family to ignore so when she started popping that's when her family was like okay i guess you can use our last name <laughs> would you do that cover below i would not be like no yeah i didn't want me to use it before i'm not gonna use it now but dorian's career skyrocketed after her debut on harper's bazaar landing her on the covers of vogue life l and paris Mat. in 1946 alone dorian graced the pages of american vogue six times amidst this whirlwind of success dorian found herself in tangled in a romantic liaison with the acclaimed photographer Irving Penn. Remember, she was already married, okay? While their relationship was fleeting, Dorian's professional collaborations continued to flourish, including work with photographer Paul Radkai. However, it was Radkai's wife, Karen, who introduced turmoil into Dorian's life. Karen's ambition to become a fashion photographer led her to want to photograph Dorian. She made the request that was firmly denied from Dorian. Dorian was like, no, I don't want you taking pictures of me, which wasn't too smart on Dorian's part. So Karen wanted to retaliate. In retaliation, Karen vowed to ruin her, a threat she fulfilled by ensuring Dorian never worked for Vogue again. So she never had a Vogue cover after that again. But fate had other plans for Dorian Lee. Her dismissal from Vogue opened the door to a fruitful collaboration with Richard Avedon, Harper's Bazaar's rising star photographer. Together, they embarked on a journey that would further cement Dorian's status as a modeling icon, proving that not even the most scandalous setbacks could dim her luminous career. And she really helped put Harper's Bazaar even more on the map with the Vogue thing but isn't it funny how in Hollywood modeling agencies and all that one person you can work so hard for something but you say no to the wrong person and your whole career is done for you can't even ever get a Vogue cover again so do you see why a lot of these stars are terrified of saying no to the wrong person and they kind of get along just do whatever in a sense sell their souls because selling your souls is not always literally selling your soul it's compromising your morals doing things that you said you would never do because your livelihood is now being threatened especially if you have kids you're accustomed to a life you worked hard to get to where you're at imagine you have your degree you went to school you have your own practice and one person that you just made unhappy take all of that away from you when you really didn't do anything to them it's just a cruel world and that happened to Dorian because she never had a Vogue cover after that. I would be so upset. But Harper's Bazaar welcomed her with open arms and she really helped put them on the map. The glamorous whirlwind of fashion shoots, parties, and high society did not accommodate the demands of motherhood leading Dorian to make a difficult decision. She sent her children to live with her parents, granting herself the freedom to fully immerse herself into the intoxicating allure of New York City. So she did abandon her kids, kind of let her parents raise them, and also she was still not claiming them, so it just worked out. She chose her career, which was just, I don't know. It was this very lifestyle that piqued the curiosity of Truman Capote, an up-and-coming author with a keen eye for intriguing characters. And while visiting a friend in a Manhattan apartment building, Capote couldn't help but notice the constant buzz of activity, parties that seemed to never end, and a parade of men coming and going at another suite down the hall. 
the occupant none other than Dorian Lee. Capote was fascinated by Dorian and her flamboyant way of life. He befriended her, eagerly absorbing the juicy details of her escapades and even bestowing upon her the nickname Happy Go Lucky. Inspired by Dorian's vibrant personality and her seemingly carefree existence, Capote went on to write Breakfast at Tiffany's in 1958, introducing the world to Holly Golightly, a fabulous single woman in Manhattan who many believe was modeled after Dorian Lee. She inspired Breakfast at Tiffany's character, Holly Golightly. And when you see the movie, you will see, oh, okay, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Dorian's lavish lifestyle demanded an equally lavish income. And in 1945, she found the perfect partnership with Revlon. The cosmetics giant was on the hunt for a face to launch its new lipstick shade, Fatal Apple. Planning a bold full-color two-page national advertisement, Dorian then 35, and at the pinnacle of her modeling career, was a chosen one. This collaboration marked the beginning of a profitable relationship between Dorian and Revlon, peaking with the iconic Fire and Ice ad campaign. Dressed in a silver sequin gown and wrapped in a dramatic red cloak, Dorian epitomized the daring allure Revlon wanted to convey. The provocative ad copy suggested the lipstick was for those who love to flirt with fire, who dare to skate on thin ice. Earning the campaign the magazine advertisement of the year award. However, as Dorian reached the apex of her career, her personal life began to shift. Sissy introduced Dorian to Roger Melee, an officer, and sparks flew. And by 1948, a pregnant Dorian walked down the aisle once more. With marriage came a resurgence of maternal instincts, prompting Dorian to reunite with her children, her other children that she had left behind. <laughs> they were brought from Florida to Pennsylvania. Despite now having three children to care for, Dorian was eager to return to modeling. However, she soon discovered that her long-standing relationship with her modeling agency was dying. In a bold move, she established her own modeling agency, Fashion Bureau, aiming to overhaul the tradition and often tardy payment system for models. She introduced a revolutionary voucher system, which made sure that models receive weekly paychecks instead of languishing in financial uncertainty while waiting for clients to settle their dues. Mm -hmm. Her innovative approach caught the attention of Eileen Ford, who alongside her husband would later establish Ford Models, transforming it into one of the globe's most illustrious modeling agencies. Dorian generously shared her insight with Eileen, unknowingly sowing the seed for what would become a modeling empire. However, when it came to her own agency, success proved elusive. And in a twist of fate, she found herself knocking on the very door she helped open, Ford Models. She would sign with them if they also took on her little sister, Cecilia, better known as Susie Parker, without so much as a glance. The Fords, intrigued by the prospect of having a high-profile model like Dorian on their roster, agreed but insisted on meeting Cecilia first. Expecting someone in the mold of Dorian, the Fords were taken aback when they were introduced to Susie. Towering over her sister with striking red hair and captivating green eyes, 15-year-old Susie was a far cry from what they had anticipated. She didn't have the conventional beauty, beauty, although she was gorgeous. She didn't look like the models of that era. They couldn't yet see her beauty. But nonetheless, the Fords were quick to recognize her potential, signing both sisters in a heartbeat. And as the years unfolded, Susie's star didn't just rise, it soared. Overshadowing Dorian's accomplishments, she became a bigger model than Dorian, right? Susie became a sensation, dominating magazine covers, venturing into television and film, and becoming the first model to earn an astonishing $100,000 a year. Her fame even caught the attention of the Beatles, who penned a song in her honor. Check out her video. It's all thanks to Dorian. But later on in life, they ended up not being cool with each other, with Susie accusing Dorian of being a jealous hater who got upset that now her career was rising and she was not a bigger deal and Dorian was not in her feelings about it. And then she also claimed that she did not like Dorian's lifestyle. Dorian was living pretty wild, which Dorian was, but Susie also wasn't, you know. She wasn't the cleanest apple in a bunch, but I digress. But Dorian was living a pretty wild life, so I understand that also. And she did try to help Dorian, but... Yeah, the sisters did end up falling out. Meanwhile, Dorian's life was a whirlwind of professional engagements and personal upheavals. After welcoming her third child in 1949, she balanced her modeling career with family obligations, splitting her time between New York and Paris. Despite the chaos, Dorian cherished motherhood, famously telling Look Magazine, I would rather have a baby than a mink coat, end quote. To her, kids were accessories, and we will see that. The summer prior to her heartfelt declaration, Dorian embarked on a passionate affair in Paris with Alfonso Cabeza de Vaca. 
a younger married Spanish aristocrat with a penchant for older women. A race car driver, bobsledder, and pilot, Alfonso was captivated by Dorian after seeing her in the Revlon ad. Their whirlwind romance, however, led to an unexpected pregnancy, and faced with the daunting prospect of ending her marriage and potentially losing custody of her existing children, Dorian made the heart-wrenching decision to terminate the pregnancy. In a dramatic turn of events, Dorian returned to the United States, divorced Mele, and embarked on a new chapter of her life, leaving behind the summer of love and its complications. Her divorce marked not an end, but the beginning of a tale that would rival any Hollywood drama. No sooner had the ink dried on her divorce papers, Dorian found herself jetting off to Mexico, her heart set on a rendezvous with her dashing Spanish lover, Alfonso Cabeza de Vaca. The plan was simple marry in the sun-soaked landscapes of Mexico and start new. But there was a catch, a rather big one. Alfonso was still very much married to his first wife. Undeterred by such trivial matters as legalities, Dorian and Alfonso went ahead with their marriage ceremony, fully aware it was nothing more than a symbolic gesture. Like The marriage wouldn't count because he was already married. It wouldn't count. But they still went on and had a wedding anyways. With Alfonso technically juggling two wives, the pair decided to throw caution to the wind and live out their romance as if bound by law. Even as Alfonso's official wife welcomed their child into the world, his first wife that he didn't divorce had her baby because they were pregnant at the same time. He continued his passionate liaison with Dorian. The high society circles were not happy with this. There was gossip everywhere, many labeling Dorian's infatuation as a mistake and as stupid, right? Among the naysayers was none other than the legendary Coco Chanel, which I did a video for Coco Chanel also. Go check that out. And Coco Chanel bluntly told Dorian she was throwing her life away on an idiot, end quote. Yet Dorian turned a deaf ear, her love for Alfonso blinding her. In a twist of fate, Dorian found herself pregnant once again. Unlike her previous pregnancy, this one didn't threaten to engulf her in scandal. After all, she was no longer Miss Melee. But it was 1955 and bearing a child out of wedlock still carried a heavy stigma. Refusing to terminate this pregnancy, Dorian concocted a plan to dodge the scandalous whisper she would seclude herself as her belly grew, opting to hide away in Switzerland under the guise of being a guest in Charlie Chaplin's sprawling estate. To her parents, she spun a tale of seeking treatment at a tuberculosis clinic, a story far removed from her actual predicament. When her son, Kim Blast, was born, Dorian hoped that this new life might anchor her tumultuous relationship with Alfonso. However, Alfonso's attention had already drifted to Linda Christian, a bombshell actress formerly married to Hollywood royalty, Tyrone Power. In other sense, you lose him how you get him, but the story doesn't end here. To add insult to injury, Alfonso had managed to borrow a hefty sum of $15,000 from Dorian, leaving her in a precarious financial situation. With modeling no longer a viable career, Dorian did what she knew best. She opened her own modeling agency. And despite his new affair, Alfonso dangled promises of commitment before Dorian. He still showed her, I'm still in love with you, I love you, you know, blah, blah, blah. While still, you know, dating another woman, a third woman in the mix, because his first wife was still there. Setting a date for his official divorce, May 9th, 1957, which never came to be. Fade had a cruel twist in store. This is where he gets creepy, guys. On the eve of his supposed liberation, when he was going to divorce his wife, he set the date and already spoke to his wife and everything. Alfonso met a tragic end in the Mil Miglia race in Italy, his car crashing and claiming the lives of nine spectators along with his own. But what happened, he got in a car accident, race car driving. He went into the stands. He not only died from it, but amongst it was five children. Five children, unfortunately, also lost their lives in this tragic accident. Ah, uh, it was just terrible but nine people ended up dying and among them was five children so he never did get to divorce his wife and a lot of people in Italy around that time and that new Dorian was like ah, oh, yeah the wife knew what was happening and just was like nope not if I have anything to do it because why do you say that Corrine and why was people saying that mm. there was also many tragedies that was happening with Susie Parker Dorian's dad we're gonna get into it around that same time but the first came with I guess the wife found out about the son that Dorian Lee had with Alfonso because of Susie Parker. So the tragedy was compounded when Dorian's sister Susie Parker by accident revealed the existence 
of Kim Blass, their son, Alfonso and Dorian, their son, to a gossip columnist, a secret Dorian had fought hard to keep. No one knew about this love child. The news shattered the family, prompting Dorian's parents to issue a heartless ultimatum. They threatened to take her children, her other children, away from her and disown Kim Blass, which was sad because Kim didn't deserve that. But those that were not welcoming, welcoming him into the family, he just doesn't belong. But then also in the same instance, Alfonso's first wife, found out this way which is probably why wait you're going to divorce me there's a love child hmm you kind of see where we're connecting the dots in a desperate plea dorian convinced her parents to allow her to see her children because they did take her children from her a decision that would haunt them because she really wasn't giving these children a stable life as we will continue to see because she was out partying a lot working a lot traveling a lot she was barely around them but she just saw them as like accessories a lot and i think a part of her really wanted to be in their lives and be a good mom but it's just it didn't the environment didn't call for that the modeling agency she had established in the wake of alfonso's fatal accident remained a beacon of hope for her but amidst this attempt to rebuild life through dorian another curveball another pregnancy she got pregnant again i guess by alfonso before he died and then she found out like she was pregnant like he already died like it was just sad the year took a heart-wrenching turn when Dorian, pregnant and hopeful, received news that would forever alter her world. This is where I say they put roots on her. A train had collided with a car carrying her sister Susie and their father on the way to visit their cancer-stricken mother who was in the hospital. So her mother was in the hospital battling cancer. Susie and the dad were on their way to go see the mother. And this was around the time Alfonso died, okay? While Susie survived with multiple fractures, their father did not and ended up dying in the car crash. Overwhelmed by grief, she approached her gynecologist with a request born out of despair to terminate her pregnancy. He complied. First of all, the father of this baby is dead. My dad just died. My mom is battling cancer. She started to really lose her mind. In the shadow of tragedy, Dorian sought solace in an unexpected place. She married her gynecologist Serge Bordat, the same gynecologist who terminated her baby, she ended up marrying him a few days after the termination. Do you see how she was not in her right frame of mind? Just crazy. Yet when Dorian expressed her desire for another child, Bordat's response was not what she had hoped for. Immediately after marrying him, he just terminated a child. And then she's like, actually, I want to have a baby. Get me pregnant. You know, and he was like, um, yeah, no, <laughs> declaring himself too young for fatherhood. But he was also very hesitant. Like, I just terminated a child for you. He, you know, ignited Dorian's resolve. Like, she was so upset that he did not want to give her a child and get her pregnant. And so she was like, you know what? I don't need you. With her bags packed, Dorian exited their shared life with a daring plan in mind. She still was married to him and still was claiming her as a husband, but she wasn't living like a married woman. A ski vacation in Switzerland's Closters Resort became the unlikely setting for her bold scheme. Surrounded by potential suitors, Dorian embarked on a quest to conceive, engaging with multiple men within a week. So she had one week and her plan was sleep with as many men as possible so at least one of them could get me pregnant. But I really think she was having a mental breakdown. I really think that's what it was. I, I don't think she was like in her right mind at that time because she was going through so much. And by September 1961, her strategy did work. She did get pregnant and she did not know who was the father. Yet the revelation of her actions to Bordat, like her new husband, by one of Dorian's own models, who ended up snitching, sold the seeds of their eventual divorce. And adding to the complexity, Dorian kept Miranda, the child that she was pregnant with, the child born from this scheme, and the dark about her true paternity until her teenage years. So Miranda ended up finding out that she don't even know where her dad is and that the gynecologist was not her dad when she was a teen. She could never know because Dorian just didn't know. The saga continued when Dorian, at 47, married 23-year-old Ido Ben Gurion, a writer from Israel with clandestine involvements in the drug trade. Ben Gurion's nefarious activities extended to embezzling funds from Dorian's modeling agency, and this marriage, Dorian's fifth, ended as swiftly as it began with a divorce that failed to recover the stolen money. So she did have the good sense to end it with him. With her fifth marriage dissolved and her finances in ruins thanks to her husband's reckless spending, Dorian found herself grappling with financial instability. Determined to claw her way back from the brink, she embarked on a culinary journey studying cooking 
cooking with a lot of passion and her passion led her to open a restaurant, Shelly, a venture that shimmered with promise from 1973 to 1975. Yet the dream was short lived and by 1976, Dorian was penniless. The news of the former model's dire situation rippled across the Atlantic, catching the attention of a New York City modeling agency in need of an office manager. Seizing what appeared to be a lifeline, Dorian decided it was time to return to the States. Little did she know this move would reunite her with a piece of her past. Her son, Kim Blast, the son she had with Alfonso, the race car driver who died. In a twist of fate, Kim had established a life in New York City and had even befriended Anthony de Portago, the very son born to Alfonso and his lawful wife during Alfonso's affair with Dorian. The reunion with Kim Blast was bittersweet though. While Dorian cherished the opportunity to reconnect with her long lost son, she soon discovered that Kim was battling addiction. And a desperate bid to help him, she sent him to California to live with his aunt, Susie Parker. Susie, hoping for her nephew's recovery, was very sad to learn he wasn't seeking help for his addiction. Feeling betrayed, she had no choice but to ask him to leave. Returning to New York City, Kim faced his demons alone. Tragically unable to overcome them, he made the heart-wrenching decision to end his own life. Jumping from his 33rd floor apartment window, he left behind a note, a silent testament to his inner turmoil. The loss of her son was a devastating blow to Dorian, one from which she would take years to recover. And unfortunately, he was filled with a lot of grief. His dad died. His mom was in a round, like they reunited after and then when he had troubles, you sent him to live with Susie. But I believe she sent him to live with Susie because she herself was battling mental stuff too. And I'm going to tell you guys my final thoughts in a minute. In her later years, Dorian Lee retreated from the public eye, settling in Pound Ridge, New York, to make ends meet. She crafted pâtés for local restaurants and even in cafes, you know, and collaborated with culinary icon Martha Stewart. Despite the dramatic chapters of her earlier life, Dorian's final years were actually peaceful and it was marked by quiet resilience. She passed away in 2008 in a nursing home succumbing to Alzheimer's disease at the age of 91, having outlived two of her children. Dorian Lee's story is a reminder of the fleeting nature of fame and fortune. And I must say, even during that era, even during that time, that was a lot of substance being used in a modeling world and a lot of extravagant parties and pipping out even in Susie Parker's story you guys saw how her husband Susie Parker her sister her husband was trying to pimp her out like was giving men who were interested a price <laughs> so as classy and as elegant as these models look even in the golden age in the 1930s very well dressed there were still the dark nefarious things happening behind the scenes where they were being sold they were being pumped with substances and they were told to just perform the energetic and you know stuff like that so I'm not making excuses for her but I really do believe that yeah she came into this world she had to lie so much she had to sacrifice her children she was disrespected when she tried to be you know work in technology and engineering they didn't respect her they didn't respect her intellect I did think she was a very intelligent woman and she had a very kind and compassionate heart regardless if people was like oh you know she was hating on her sister Susie regardless of that she did not want to leave her sister behind and really got her sister to climb up with her and she was like helping out financially with her parents paying her parents also to you know help watch the kids all that stuff and was trying to do the best she could in an environment that was pretty toxic and god knows what else that she went through that probably led to some of these events in her life either way her life was just crazy right but a lot of people do speculate the way her dad died it was like weird and alfonso died that same time and then kim her son ended up taking his own life was into substances he probably was sad because of everything but it just seemed like Ever since she messed with him, Coco Chanel was warning her. A lot of the other models was warning her. So many people was trying to tell her, leave this man alone. He's bad news, bad vibes. His wife is, you know, it's weird. It was like he was even scared of his own wife. He couldn't even divorce her properly. And she just didn't listen, you know, and not victim shaming or anything, but she just refused to listen. And, you know, you know, people don't play like that. But comment below your thoughts. This was just so crazy, right? This was crazy. But she still deserves her flowers. And she did pave the way for models getting paid like bi-weekly with these agencies and don't have to wait on certain months. She fought to advocate for a lot of models and gave a lot of other models opportunities to not just Susie Parker. She really was a 
I, I know it sucks to say girl's girl when she was out here having affairs with people's husbands. But that aside, she really did care for the advancement of models in the industry and for women in general. Like she, she would speak up and stuff like that, you know. So I believe she, she'll she get her flowers from that because we are complex. You know, we're complex humans. We can be both fire and ice. And Dorian Lee is just one of those people that is fire and ice. But I'm so curious to read these comments because this was a crazy story, right? Right. But don't forget to check out her sister, Susie Parker. I'll put it in the pinned comments for you guys. Also in the end cards. Check out that video because it's just as insane. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. If you like the music or listen to the link is in the description. Until next time.